In the conservative 1950s and 60s, queer art in America was an underground movement widely shunned by the public. However, in 1969, the Stonewall Riots acted as a catalyst for the gay rights movement, which resulted in queer artists more openly expressing their sexuality and gender through their art. Before the Stonewall Riots, homosexuals in America faced great oppression by the public and the government. In the 1950s, under Senator Joseph McCarthy, federal and state governments investigated many employees who were homosexual or thought to be homosexual, which resulted in many being fired. In New York, during this time period, the state created laws that forbade homosexual people from gathering in any state-licensed public places like bars. Also, specifically gay men were seen as public menaces and young boys were taught ways to avoid them. The government created videos for this very purpose, such as this clip shown here. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick, a sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious, a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual, a person who may appear normal, and it may be too late when you discover he is mentally ill. In the art community, queer artists were equivalently oppressed. Queer art before the Stonewall Riots existed in America, but for the most part, it was shunned by the public and mainstream art culture denied its relation to the queer identity. In order to hide their sexuality in their art, queer artists expressed themselves subtly through symbols and messages. Ruth Bernard's photograph, Two Leaves, from 1952 exemplifies this practice. This black and white photograph of two leaves mimics an embrace of two women. The leaves serve as a metaphor for lesbian intimacy. The general public would not have accepted explicit depictions of homosexual activities. In the 30s, the Hollywood Conduct Code prohibited discussion of homosexuality, and in New York, a state law was passed in the 30s that outlawed gay representation on Broadway. Therefore, even into the 50s and 60s, gay love was often shown through metaphors and symbols instead of blatant expression. This technique of coding art to represent queerness also extended to print media and books. There were keywords, phrases, and symbols that often had a queer connotation in art and literature. Novels with words such as twilight or strange, with images of women in suggestive poses, were most likely lesbian literature. Odd Girl Out by Anne Weldy, published in 1957, followed this pattern of lesbian representation. To a straight audience, the gay subtext is not immediately obvious, but to the trained eye of a suppressed lesbian, the use of odd and out, along with the women pictured on the cover, the novel is clearly a lesbian story. Queer art was edited or veiled by the straight public or by art curators to conform to it to the straight art world. Heterosexual art curators created various ways to disguise the queer art in a collection. For example, they would name art pieces as the friends or sisters to make an explanation for queer scenes depicted. The sexuality of the gay artists were labeled as celibate, asexual, or sexually confused in order to cover up the artist's true identity. By using these techniques, the gay identity seen in the art was taken away as it was interpreted to be non-queer to make it acceptable for mainstream culture. The events at the Stonewall Inn on June 28, 1969, acted as a turning point in the fight for gay rights. This conflict was caused by the state refusing to give the bar a liquor license, which forced the bar to operate illegally. The denial of the liquor license for Stonewall was not the first. New York had laws that denied liquor licenses to gay bars in the state. The raid infuriated the patrons of the bar, which led to the riots. The Stonewall Inn was raided by police officers. The police officers used the excuse of illegal alcohol in order to forcefully break up the meeting of gay individuals. During the initial riots, 13 people were arrested by police for various offenses. During the raid, only about 200 men were at the inn, but more congregated outside in the streets. The fighting between police and protesters lasted six days. However, the riots acted as a catalyst for gay rights. After the riots, many more gay rights groups were formed and protested for equality. Along with this, there was a spike in gay pride and pride parades started to show up across the country. The gay identity was slowly accepted into mainstream culture. This visibility decreased prejudice against LGBT people. Within the decade following the riots, queer artists more freely expressed different sexualities and genders in mainstream media. 
On June 27, 1970, one year after the riots, the first Pride Parade was held by the Chicago Gay Liberation Group in Washington Square Park. The parade sparked visibility for queer Americans. Artists took this opportunity to spread their message of gay rights to the public. This tradition carried into future generations of the gay community, and in 1991, the photographer Nan Golden captured a picture of her friend in her photo titled Jimmy Paulette After the Parade, NYC 1991. A photograph of a drag queen after a pride parade in New York City shows an openness and comfortableness with public expression of gender. These pride parades were a defining symbol of the LGBT liberation movement. Golden, a bisexual photographer, used her work to inspire the public towards acceptance and exploration. According to the Tate Museum, Golden's art influenced a generation of photographers seeking to validate their lifestyles outside the norms of acceptable behavior. The post-Stonewall era created a wave of artists ready and willing to share their queerness with other artists and with the public. After the riots, the American people became more accepting and welcoming of LGBT content. In 1970, the book Sexual Politics by Kate Millett sold 20,000 copies in its first month of publication. Kate Millett, a feminist and lesbian, was accepted by the mainstream media in a way that could not have happened before Stonewall. She was featured on the cover of Time magazine on August 31, 1970. The cover featured a painting of Millett done by painter Alice Neal. For Alice Neal, a queer artist, this painting accelerated her career and publicity. Neal gained attention through magazine articles, awards, and talk shows such as The Johnny Carson Show. She also received an honorary doctoral degree from her alma mater, the Moore College of Art. She was later photographed by gay artist Robert Mapplethorpe in 1984. This national recognition of the LGBT community and queer artists in America inspired artists to be more open about their queerness in their works. A piece that came after Neil's portrait of Millet was a photograph titled Robert Mapplethorpe and Samuel Wagstaff Jr. by Francesco Scavullo from 1974. This photograph shows affection and care between two men, the artist Mapplethorpe and the collector of his work, Wagstaff. They were in a long-standing relationship, and this public display of an intimate moment represents the changes in society after Stonewall that allowed this open intimacy between gay men. This photograph later gained more public recognition when it acted as a poster for the documentary called Black, White, and Grey in 2007, which the New York Times referred to as visionary. The post-Stonewall era created an environment where queer artists could build relationships with each other and with the public. The rise in the gay rights movement invited a more general American audience to view and appreciate queer art for what it truly was, an open expression of a previously repressed sexuality. The Stonewall riots acted as a stepping stone towards equality for LGBT people. Initially, the riots had negative effects, like arrests and damage to property, but as time continued, they helped create a positive resolution for the gay community. The riots brought visibility to a group that was hidden in the shadows of a predominantly heterosexual and cisgender world. They allowed for the previously hidden group of queer artists and authors to be seen and accepted by mainstream art communities. Overall, the riots catalyzed the modern gay rights movement, and in more recent history, the United States Supreme Court ruled in favor of same-sex marriage in 2015. Without the events at Stonewall and the assimilation of gay culture into more mainstream America, this ruling could not have happened. All of the people that fought at Stonewall not only helped with their immediate plea, but they provided future generations of LGBT youth with a more accepting world.